Hi, my name is Roger and welcome. A couple of videos ago I showed you a little bit about reverbs. Today I want to show you how I use reverbs and how you can create depth in your mix. Are you ready? Reverbs are difficult. And first, we might have to define what is a reverb. Most reverbs simulate room acoustics. And that is when the sound bounces from the wall, ceiling and floor so close together that we can't hear the individual bounces. We hear it as a room acoustic reverb. But there are also reverbs that doesn't necessarily simulate room acoustics. More about that later. You probably heard about the rule that the longer the reverb, the further away the source will feel when you're listening to it. But that's not really accurate and I will show you that in a little bit. I told you in my former video that we have four types of acoustic reverbs. And that is ambience, room, chamber and hall. And then we have mechanical reverbs like plates and springs. And we can use them differently to create different kinds of sounds and excitement in our mix. But I don't define reverbs in my mind that way. I will show you what I mean right now. So here's a guitar loop. Yes, it's the same loop that I had in my former video, but I made it a little bit longer. So hopefully you won't get as bored with it as you probably did in that video. You can hear that it's very, very dry. It's very closed mic There's no room sound, no ambience at all on this. The first thing I might want to do to this is to move the microphone a little bit away from the instrument to make a little bit of distance between the guitar and the microphone. This is what I call office. I call it office because it's not totally dry. But it's not a room sound either. This we can make with a short reverb that have mostly early reflections. And early reflections are the first few bounces of the wall, floor or ceiling. The bounces we actually can hear but they are, they are very close together. This is also a reverb I want to keep mellow. I don't want to hear this reverb in a mix. I just want to feel it. I want to feel that the instrument or the vocal is recorded in a room. This is the guitar dry. And now with the office. A pro tip when it comes to short reverbs is to have the mono in and stereo out. So the send to the reverb is in mono, but from the reverb it's in stereo. Then we have the natural stereo sound of the room, like we have two ears, hence the stereo. But we can pan the instrument where we want, but still have the room in stereo. So here I've panned the guitar totally to the right, and I will exaggerate the room a little bit. Please listen in headphones or a good studio monitor or something so you can hear it. The guitar is on right, but the room sound is in stereo. That is a way we can create some distance from our source to the microphone. We all, me included, record things so closed mic nowadays. For many reasons. One is that we may like that closed mic vocal sound that's in your face. But also that we don't have the rooms nowadays to record it with some distance to our mic. Maybe we want to get rid of the room sound we're in. Therefore, we close mic it instead. The next reverb I call natural. Natural, well, it's natural. It, it's what it sounds like a real space, a room or hall or something. I often go for a room reverb for this, but it could also be a chamber or a hall. This reverb, I want the instruments to be inside of a room. 
Uh, one more thing. I've exaggerated the reverbs in this video so you can hear them properly. So let's listen to the guitar dry. And now with the room reverb. I don't want to hear this reverb either. I just want to feel it in a mix. I want to feel that the instrument or the vocal is inside of a room, a well-sounding room. The next reverb I call tail. This is the only reverb I really want to hear. And this doesn't have to be acoustic sounding. I often go for a plate, maybe a spring, maybe a chamber for this, and I make it often rather bright. This reverb, I want to hear the tail of the reverb. Make a snare drum longer, for example, or fill in the gaps in a vocal. This reverb I use to get excitement in the mix. Here's the guitar dry. And with the tail. I won't go into how long the reverbs should be in this video and all the settings I do. I will make a PDF that I will put on my Patreon if you're interested, a PDF in how to use reverbs. The fourth reverb we're gonna go through in this video is what I call height. We human beings are not so good at remember how things sounded, but we remember how things felt. So we remember even how the sound felt when we entered a big building like a church, mosque, castle or something where the ceiling was high. So here I go for a hall. I go for a hall or a cathedral setting or something. This creates space above the instrument or the vocal. like these kind of videos please give the video a like and also subscribe if you haven't that really helps me a lot so how can we use reverbs to create depth in our mix how can we move instruments or vocals further back or forward first as i mentioned we have the office the early reflections where we can use them to move the microphone a little bit back but that doesn't move the instrument way back in our room maybe we want that then we can use a longer reverb with no pre-delay. I will tell you sort of the same example as I did in my former video. If we are in a room, a hall, and we are listening to a singer, and we're in the front row, so it's only a few meters to the singer, we will hear the direct sound of the signal before the reverb. Therefore, the singer will sound close, but the room will be big. If we are in the back of the hall, then the reverb and the singer's direct voice will come close together and the singer will sound far away. And we can use our pre-delay to make that happen. Therefore, I have two height settings in my mix. I will show you why in a little bit. One with a long pre-delay to make the sound move closer but the room big. And one with a short pre-delay to make the sound sound further back. I've just done a little loop with some sampled drums, bass, verlitzer strings and a Hammond B3. And this is how it sounds dry. That's no three-dimensional space in that. Everything is on the same line. So let's create some depth in this. Let's start with the drums. These are sample drums that I have on my webpage if you're interested. It's just a bass drum, snare drum and hi-hat. And I want them to sit in a room. So I chose the natural with a sort of one second room setting. And I have a little bit on the kick drum and hi-hat and a little bit more on the snare drum and now they sound like this. I also wanted a little bit of a tail on the snare drum, so I chose the tail for that, of course. This is a plate reverb, one and a half seconds-ish. It's an EMT 140 plate simulation. So now the drum sounds like this.
there's no reverb on the bass. You could have reverb on the bass, but maybe you have to do a high pass filter before the reverb, so the low end doesn't cloudy up the mix. But in this case, no reverb. I have a funky guitar loop from Native Instruments Contact. It sounds like this, and it's very dry. So I just put some office on it to make the funk guitar sit in a room a little bit. This is a short reverb, 0.4 seconds long. I actually did the same thing with the Verlitzer. Just some office on it. I think the Verlitzer might be the main instrument in this short loop. And then, because I have a virtual amplifier on my Verlitzer, I also raise the spring reverb in that virtual amplifier, which is in mono. And mono reverb can be a bit pointy and actually make the instrument or the vocal point out from the mix a little bit. So let's see how that sounds. I recorded some strings from Logic's Studio Strings and I wanted them to be in a room a little bit so I raised the office a little bit and then I went from the height near and what I call height near is the height, the hall with a long pre-delay so the sound is direct but the room is big. Now they sound like this. The last instrument. I recorded my Nord Electro with the Hammond B3 sound and this I want to be like a special effect in the background so I chose to go with both the natural just a normal room and also the height far to place it further back in our mix so I don't have to lower the volume of the B3 it would just feel that it's in the back and it sounds like this. So there we have all, all the instruments in this short loop. As I told you, I've exaggerated the reverb so you can hear them. Let's listen to the mix dry a couple of bars and then I will put the reverbs on but in a more moderate volume. So here's dry. And with some reverb. You can listen to the quality of the reverb when you are soloing an instrument or vocal, but you can't adjust the amount of reverb until you hear it in context of the whole mix, or at least a whole group of instruments. There are so many other tricks you can do to reverbs like EQ, deessing, compressing both before or after the reverb, ducking, gating other special effects. If you want me to do a video about that, please tell me in the comments. Now, because my channel celebrates one year on YouTube, I have a giveaway. And that is a reverb. This one. A TC Electronic M1 XL. And this hardware reverb unit sounds amazing. I have several of these myself and I use them live. This one have never been out of, outside of the box except in the music store. It was a Demo X. Uh, you can totally use it in the studio if you want to. It sounds that good. The chorus is also really good on it. So what do you have to do to get it? Well, you have to do four things. Like this video. Subscribe to my channel. Sign up to the email list on my webpage. The link is down below. Then you will also get my songwriting guide for free and comment on this video how you would use this reverb. Where would you use it and how? And then I will pick one of you randomly and I will send it all over the world. Doesn't matter what country you live in. So that's it for today. Do you know that office is contour in Swedish? Contour.
Until next time, Roger Dabbs.